Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about duality theorem, which is, to put it simply, about uh, looking at an optimization problem from a different perspective. For example, we have here a profit maximization problem. According to duality theorem, this profit maximization problem has a dual LP, which is a cost minimization problem. So this LP was formulated from the perspective of a decision maker who would like to maximize his profits subject to capacity, manpower, and market constraint. In order to formulate the dual to this LP, we have to look at the problem from perspective of a decision maker that seeks to acquire the uh, the uh, resources of this decision maker, of the original decision maker, in order to drive him away from the market. So, for the second decision maker, the objective is to minimize the cost of, of purchasing the resources of the first decision maker. So, the decision variables are going to be how much he's going to pay or he's willing to pay for one unit of capacity, one unit of manpower, and one unit of market. Let's call those decision variables Y1, Y2, and Y3. So, Y1 is going to be the unit price for one unit, uh, the, uh, the unit price for capacity, the capacity resource. Y2 is going to be the price of one unit of manpower. And Y3 is the price of one unit of market share. So let's start formulating our uh, dual LP. I'm going to try to uh, color code it. So of course, we already said that it is a minimization LP. So we're going to call it W. We said that the objective was to minimize the cost of purchasing all the resources of the first decision maker. So it's going to be the total cost of purchasing the capacity, all the capacity resource, plus the total cost of purchasing all the units of manpower, plus the total cost of purchasing all the market share units. So it's going to be 150 Y1 plus as you can see, 150, 150, and 100 are the units of each resource available at the disposal of the first decision maker. So 150, 50, Y2 plus 100, Y3. Okay, now for the constraints. Uh, first of all, we need to keep in mind that the second decision maker is trying to tempt the first decision maker to sell his resources and leave the market. So obviously, he needs to uh, give him a tempting offer. So the least he could pay him for his resources has to be equal or greater than the uh, profit he's going to make from making his products and selling them. So, the uh, amount of money paid for the first resource has to be less uh, greater than or equal to the profit made from using that resource in making 
the products. To put it in an equation form or in equation form, it's 2y1 plus 6y2 plus 1y3. So these are the resources needed in order to make product one. So this amount needs to be greater than or equal to the profit per unit of product one. It's the same for the rest of the uh, constraints. So, the amount to offer to counter the profit of product 2 is 1y1 one plus 3y2 plus 1y3 need to be greater than or equal to 2, which is the unit profit of product 2. So for the last constraint, we have 2y3, uh, sorry, I mean 2y1 plus for y2 plus 1y3 have to be greater than or equal to 3. Now the only thing left to do is to determine the sign of the signs of y1, y2, y3, which are the dual variables which is, by the way, very important. You guys keep forgetting to put this uh, constraint in the exam and in the homework, and it's frustrating. Anyway, so the signs of the dual variables is actually dependent on the sign, the signs in the uh, constraints in the primal. So, Let's look at this, these uh, constraints, the primate constraints. All of them have less than or equal signs. And this is a maximization problem. So this makes these constraints in the canonical form. I'm not going to go into details in explaining the, what the canonical form is, but uh, you can just think of it as the logical form of the constraint. Because when you have a maximization problem, you, have, you need to have a ceiling, something that limits it from growing uh, to, uh, towards infinity. So, when you have a maximization problem, the logical thing, thing to have is something that is less than or equal and we ha when we have a minimization problem the canonical form or as we call it here the logical form would be greater than or equal constraints i hope this was clear i think we'll get it once we do more examples so to sum it up if the constraints in the primal are in the canonical form, the decision variables in the dual are going to be positive. So y1, y2, and y3 are all greater than or equal to zero.
so this is our dual LP and if you look at it it almost looks like we've rotated the primal LP 90 degrees to the left so this is the first question in problem one in the duality uh, tutorial now we're going to move on to the next question so the second question is to provide the optimal primal and dual solutions and we are provided with the uh, the optimal tableau of the primal LP and from here we'll be able to deduce the uh, dual optimal solution but let's first read the uh, primal optimal solution as we learned from the uh, simplex chapter so x1 is not in the basis so its value is zero x2 is not in the basis either so it's zero x3 is in the basis and its value is 37.5 s1 is in the basis and its value is 75 s2 is not in the basis so it has the value of zero and s3 is equal to 62.5 so here the value of z or the optimal objective value is not provided but we can uh, calculate it pretty easy, easily so it is equal to the uh, the uh, product of the coefficient of x3 in the objective function and its right hand side value so it is 37.5 multiplied by by 3 so it is 112 point five okay now to move to the dual optimal solutions so we're going to be using the uh, optimal tableau of the primal LP to find the values of the uh, the dual decision variables uh, we're going to be looking at the C bar row so uh, the uh, values of y1 y2 and y3 are actually the c bar values of s1 s2 and s3 and they're actually called the shadow prices of each resource and for the uh, c bar values of x1 x2 and x3 they're called the reduced prices of each variable and for the dual LP, uh, they are equivalent to uh, uh, excess variables, you know, since we have uh, greater than or equal constraints. So we have, for each constraint, we have an excess variable, E1, E2, and E3. So as we have uh, seen before, uh, the uh, variables Y1, Y2, and Y3 are all positive uh, greater than or equal to zero so their optimal values are equal to minus one multiplied by the value in the uh, c bar row so y1 is equal to zero y2 is equal to 0 0.75 and y3 is equal to zero for the excess variables, the first excess variable is equal to 1.5, the second one is equal to 0 0.25, and the last one is equal to 0. And of course, for the uh, total cost, the optimal cost, it's 
equal to the objective value of the primal LP. So the uh, optimal cost is 112.5. Okay, now let's move to question three, which is which among the resources need to be increased and why? Okay, let's go back to the optimal tableau. We have S1 and S3 in the bases. They are different from zero. And we have S2 equal to zero. So the second resource, which is manpower, is a, uh, is a binding resource. So if we increase manpower, uh, it will have an impact on our uh, total profit since the uh, first and third resource are actually in excess. We still have uh, units of the first and third constraint in our disposal, but we have no units uh, left from uh, resource two. Hence, if we're going to increase any of the resources, it should be the second one. So now for the fourth question, how much are you willing to pay for one more unit of manpower? Well, uh, how much one more unit of manpower worth? Well, it is exactly how much uh, another decision maker that is trying to purchase our resources would pay for uh, one unit of manpower. So, uh, the value of one more unit of manpower is equal to its shadow price or the value of the dual variable Y2, which is 0 0.75. So, we are willing to pay 0 0.75 dollars or dinars or whatever to obtain one more unit of resource two which is manpower okay now for the fifth question how much are you willing to pay for mark for the marketing department to increase your market share again we go back to the optimal tableau the marketing cost the marketing uh, resource is the third resource so if we look at s3 its shadow price is zero which means that we are not willing to pay any amount of money uh, in order to increase our market share also you can see that s3 in the basis uh, we still have uh, the resource three in excess so it is not worth it to pay any amount of money to increase our market share. Okay, so the uh, next question. What should be the minimum profit rate of product one to be produced? Now we're going to be looking at this part of the question, this part of the tableau. So these are, as we already mentioned, these are the shadow prices of the resources and these are actually called the reduced costs of the products so the reduced cost of product one is 1.5 1.5 is how much the price of x1 should be increased by so that x1 is profitable so the original cost of x1 is 3 at this profit rate it's not profitable so it's not being made as we can see from the optimal tableau uh, x1 is 0 so in order to make it profitable we should add its shadow price or 1.5 so it's equal to 4.5 so to answer the question, the minimum profit rate of product one should be $4.5 in order to make it profitable and uh, enter it into the uh, product mix. 
Thank you very much for listening and I hope this was clear and let me know if you have any questions.